The slightly worn Georgian exterior of 50 Berkeley Square conceals an interior that still holds much of its 18th century splendor. The building has a timeless aura, making it easy to imagine a lady in a mantua gown or a gentleman in knee breeches emerging for a grand ball. From 1938 to 2015, Max Brothers, rare book dealers, occupied the building, filling it with mahogany bookcases and countless volumes by authors both renowned and forgotten. Yet none of these books could match the terrifying and inexplicable events that were once regular occurrences within its walls. By the early 20th century, 50 Berkeley Square was widely regarded as London's most haunted house. Charles Harper's 1907 book Haunted Houses mentions the famous haunted house at Berkeley Square, noting it as a must-see for visitors. Harper was vague about the exact nature of the haunting, but noted that it had caused at least two deaths in convulsions. He speculated that the haunted reputation might have been the invention of a novelist from years ago. Two possible contenders for this novelist exist, Edward Bulwer-Lytton, who wrote The Haunted and the Haunters, or The House and the Brain in 1859, and Rhoda Broughton, whose 1873 collection Tales for Christmas Eve included The Truth, The Whole Truth, and Nothing But the Truth. Broughton's story features a house at 32 Mayfair that may have been inspired by 50 Berkeley Square, recounting a terrifying series of events that drove residents to madness or death. Broughton's tale, written as letters between Mrs. Bessie DeWint and Mrs. Cecilia Montresor, details how the latter, after moving into a seemingly perfect house in Mayfair, discovered its haunted nature. Cecilia's maid was driven insane after witnessing something horrifying in the guest room, and a brave young man named Ralph Gordon, who attempted to spend a night in the haunted room, was found dead the next morning. These dramatic events have been cited in many accounts of 50 Berkeley Square's hauntings, even though Broughton's story was fiction. By the early 1870s, rumors of supernatural activity at 50 Berkeley Square were widespread. In December 1872, John Smith, alias Wilson, was arrested for attempting to investigate the haunting while drunk. His case highlighted the house's eerie reputation. In 1876, the Illustrated Police News detailed the house's sinister history, including unexplainable noises, mysterious figures, and an eccentric recluse named Mr. Myers, who allegedly haunted the house after being jilted by his fiancée. Mr. Myers' story, first appearing in print in 1876, described him as a wealthy but eccentric gentleman who, after a broken engagement, took to wandering the house at night. He made extensive alterations to the house and furnished it with antique furniture, but his peculiar habit of inspecting the renovations at midnight led to rumors of a ghostly presence. His nightly wanderings with a horn lantern added to the house's mystique, and his death in 1885 was one of the many tragedies linked to the building. Various accounts over the years, including an 1879 journal article and an 1884 York Herald report, solidified the house's status as a haunted location. Stories included Lord Littleton's night spent with shotguns and silver sixpences to ward off evil spirits, a sobbing ghostly child in a scotch plaid frock, and numerous unexplained deaths and madness. Despite Lady Selkirk's successful efforts to dispel the house's haunted reputation during her residency, tales of its hauntings persisted. Elliot O'Donnell's 1909 article in The Tatler and subsequent 1956 book Cavalcade of Ghosts added to the lore, including a dramatic account of two sailors' fatal encounter with a nameless horror. O'Donnell's detailed description of their terrifying experience and his own night spent in the haunted room, accompanied by a large black cat for protection, further cemented the house's eerie reputation. In modern times, 50 Berkeley Square continues to intrigue and attract visitors. Max Brothers' tenure saw few supernatural incidents, although there were occasional reports of strange phenomena. For instance, in a 2001 BBC documentary on Haunted London, a member of staff recounted seeing a column of brown mist moving across the room, and another staff member felt an overwhelming presence behind her while cleaning. A man also reported his glasses being snatched from his hand and flung to the ground while walking up the stairs. Today, 
50 Berkeley Square's appearance does not immediately evoke its ghostly past. It stands as a pleasant enough building, and those who pass by, even during the hours of darkness, rarely pay it a second glance. A blue plaque on its exterior commemorates the tenure of statesman and Prime Minister George Canning, who leased the house until his death in 1827. However, his demise at Chiswick House cannot be attributed to any malevolent force within 50 Berkeley Square. Despite the lack of concrete evidence supporting the more sensational tales, 50 Berkeley Square remains a focal point for ghost enthusiasts. The stories, whether rooted in fact or fiction, have become an indelible part of its history. Visitors still come to gaze upon its outer walls and shudder at the thought of its haunted past, firmly believing that 50 Berkeley Square is, and always will be, the most haunted house in London. Now, I'm just off to change the bedsheets. Stay spooky.